Greetings everyone, and Grade here for another H Powers 4 replay. So on bottom left side is a pink Delhi Sultan, we have Fei Chan. On top right side is the blue Mongols, we have Billy Baristo. Probably butchered that like I do with any other name. And I'm going to switch out from Delhi Sultan because Delhi Sultan likes to have those spam notifications. I and as a caster, I can't fulfill the spam notification of garrison scholars and stuff. So I'm going to switch over to the Mongols. Ovo now pulled in the field as well as the gear. He does throw a build from the berries. Berries are not a good food source. It's always better to go for sheep. When having wood here, spear rush or pasture. The villagers kept nearby, that's the reason why the villagers and the berries just keep the villager nearby the ovo. Now I realize that. But is this going for a barracks, pasture, or stable? So the wood has been collected. Barracks. We do of course have various research going on up over here. And let's take a look at the map. Looks like a Delhi Sultan player does have both his deer deposits down south, as well as some gold and some stone. Delhi Sultan can make use of stone better than most other civilizations with a compound defender to get extra town centers, aka keeps, aka town centers. <laughs> Here being redeployed in the gold deposit. The Mongol player has deer for quite a bit of gold up here. And sheep. Ooh, the one the Khan did find a good number of sheep. Ten sheep. He shall lead those to glory and not the slaughter, right? And also pain find pink finds ten sheep as well. Here comes the spearman. This is probably a good spot. It will deny the berry bushes and the gold. Going for the Dome of the Faith, which will reduce the cost of the scholars built there by 50 gold. Pink may want to delete this uh mining camp here. This is the town center arrow range, so the mill is safe and that'll be good bait. So don't delete that. Maybe good idea here to delete the mining camp. And more times two spearmen being pulled on the field, and one times one spearman. <clears throat> At least someone tends to go for Gazi Raiders in in a feudal age, in which spearmen would be, of course, very useful against that. Keshiks, of course, classified as heavy. They would take a little bit of bonus damage there, but it's not exactly a super great counter. More of a soft counter rather than a hard counter. I think there's going to be too many spearmen to pull on the field. He has six at the moment. And right now, not throwing torches there, just to deny the gold. In which Gazir is still will be a good possibility. Video Age is now researched. <laughs> Mongol has enough gold to age up. 14 villagers on food. Wolf getting some bites there. Silver tree now going on up, which could allow him to get some decent trade. Of course, Mongol trades double edged sword. There's no real way to protect your traders. Trying to torch down this uh, mining camp. This is a uh, range the town center arrows. Decides to go on the far side of the mining pit there to make them a bit more safe. Special scouts now being researched, which could be useful if he's having trouble going venturing on the map. He can perhaps grab the deer and bring them home. And when you bring them home, they're not pets; they're livestock, and already dead. You now have a stable being pulled out there. We're going to be 
once built, it's gonna be probably repacked up and redeployed here. He does have enough stone for a pair of Keshiks. Or soon to be two pairs of horsemen. No, he already has enough for two pairs of horsemen. Finding camp. Now destroyed. Arrow slit on the way. And he is going to get the Hardened Spear research. When the arrow slits research, he will be able to siege down the mill. <coughs> And maybe you'll siege down the house? Probably not. Silver tree. Now packed on up. Went for another pair of spearmen. He's going to really push this way. Maybe he should have gone for a blacksmith rather than a stable. Because the blacksmith could have gotten him siege engineers. If he's going to really try to push the spearmen up here. Got yeah, secondary stable not being employed on out. Oh, no, he's going to use a spear to corral the deer. Not bad. Difficult, but not bad. Wolf will get a bite there. Uh, oh. I mentioned beforehand professional scouts, but he's going to try to steal his opponent's uh, deer, and which he has spearmen there, so him corralling... The deer like this is allowing him to not get them stolen. He does get a kill there on that deer. Catches one field. So maybe good idea now this is a three down deer just to try to pile them, pile them up to a pile and then collect them. But he is going to try to steal his opponent's deer. His other deer posits way over here. Ink may not have scouted it out. It's in the corner along the edge at the ends of the earth. And this corner of the ends of the earth is also consumed by trees, as well as hatred. Villagers now heading up here. I for a secondary town center. Has enough stone and food. Food, wood. And these Keshiks find a good number of angry men of pointy sticks. Scouts may try to for a body block there. He's trying to body block the Keshik. Keshiks may slip on through. Guys, you of course, move at horse and speed, which means fast. Now I've got a gear going up here to claim up the deer. Very nice. We got a good number of deer. All seven deer, I believe. And let's discuss we're gonna go down here and just claim the relatively safe deer for him. But it's not relatively safe for this outpost nearby. So just need to make sure he migrates around the outpost and be just fine. Traders are here. Let's go and station a little bit of garrison up there to keep the traders safe. Daily Solomon is not going for archers, going for a spearman Gazi Raider. His opponent, the Mongol player, is going for spearman Kashik. Neither side's going for archers. He does find the scouts there. Got some good damage on one. They do have move speed. Are slower than spearmen. Slower than mana arms. He did drop one the deer, but that can be claimed. He has three scouts. Deer deposits are in groups of seven, so he can push the deer uh, scouts up there. Claim the three deer. Come back. Pick up that one. Pick up a couple more. Take up. Just take more trips. He has plenty of time. It would take time to eat all the deer, so. He has time to go around pick them up. His villagers won't eat them that quickly. Unless I was there. I'll definitely eat them up very quickly. Let's see how many traders on the field right now? Now if I got Silk Road level 1 right before this guy connect. And does get a little extra food. And looks like he's going to go. He has grabbed a round of this uh, deer. 
It's a bad deer. <clears throat> Spearman and a patrol move. Let's see, which the traders? The traders are going around this side, which is good. That's the road to be safe. Safer. So they do need an outpost here, not only for the Yam network, but just simply spotting through all the shrubbery. Because there's a decent amount of shrubbery in this location. We got a good number of Keshiks here, five Keshiks. So this is a good number of Gods for Raiders. The Keshiks were not exactly at full health as well. The Gazi Raiders are taking pretty even damage. Didn't lose one Gazi Raider there, but the rest of these ones can fall back to a Scholar and get healed up. This Keshik, however, going to get hit by multiple sides. These ones need to fall back to a Scholar and get healed up. There's a Scholar there. A more Keshik charging way forward. He's a focus fire. Looks like he is properly focus firing there. That one Keshik does go, or Gazi Raider does go down. So he has pulled off his garrison there. I would say it's probably a good idea to leave a handful there. Five, I think, is a good number. Got some arrow slits now being researched as well. Uh, uh, over here. Got the berries. Berries not a great food source, but they are a free food source. It does not have enough pastures. Far from it. Fifteen. One pasture can support up to three villagers. Got four Keshiks in the course of the con. That is not enough to fight the Gods Raiders. So he's getting a good charge attack there, but they're all wounded now. Spearmen, a half of them needs to start pushing over there. Khan has gone down. And he's keep these traders alive. The spearmen are not rotating over. Keshiks are. Because he knows he's going to go after trade, and now the traders are very, very exposed. Get six villagers inside the outpost there for self defense, but mortal traders are not going on down. <laughs> Keshik's engaging, got more Keshik's way forward, and a couple spearmen being mixed on in. I know these guys raiders are quite wounded. I wonder if he actually never got them healed up. Now you get a hit there on the traitor. Guys raiders push me forward. And now getting annihilated. Keshix. There he goes. Keep this couple of spearmen over here. That would be very helpful. Unless these spearmen manage to find a gap where he can push on forward. No outpost region to spot all the stuff. He now spots the stuff. He saw the God's Raiders, then he realizes all these angry men with pointy sticks. He does have 30 spearmen here. His opponent has... That trader goes down. As 29, both a couple archers there. So Pink has a potentially superior army. He has also more black for research. Does have more plus one melee armor. His opponent does not have plus one melee armor. Or get plus one range or, or melee damage, which will equal that stuff out. Plus one range armor's on the way. Take some hits there, and he has course gone for the scholar landmark there, not the Tower of Victory, so these spearmen are relatively equal to each other. New con has been redeployed. Trade is being recasted here. Not a great trade out, but a safer trade route than this one. Keshex moving down south.
How many traders on the field? Well, so then have the Silk Road level three, but we'll get wood and gold. Wood, gold, and food. I should see a bit of damage there. He does need to clear out that northern trade post as soon as he can because he's losing a lot of money. Not being able to trade to it. The multiplier has plenty of gold at the moment as well, so may. Doesn't have any gold miners at the moment. Yes, he does not. Scout taking some damage there. Let's take out one of those uh, scouts. Listen, all the deer have been claimed here. There's still one deer carcass in that region. I just follow him back. He does have, of course, some villagers here, and these traders are now very exposed. He's just, this is the trade post, so these traders need to stop going this way. Uh, doesn't see this group of three traders, and this is expensive loss. Will be expensive loss. Oh, there you go. They're being retasked now. Inks has a good number of spearmen here. The same 29 spearmen, three archers, I think we saw before. His opponent does have more spearmen archers as well as two Keshiks, but he does have more. Nope, they all have the basic blacksmith research. It's engineers now on the way for the Delhi Sultanate player. Yovo is to please from losing. It's not a massive problem. Actually, it's no issue whatsoever. He doesn't have any stone to utilize investing into it, other than maybe the improved forestry. Nope, that's 75 stone. Credit getting hit by a scout. Trying to update these units here, but his trade's about to get hit. We got these forces moving around, trying to gauge the wood line. We do have a number of outposts going up for, for more villager storage. We're just going to need to utilize almost all of it immediately. Try to build some walls there to put his phone in choke point. Some of the catches will be going down, but we do have a number of archers here for the Mongol player as well. Villagers a little bit exposed, no textiles research, no textiles being researched. Got some archers here. <clears throat> These forces over here will be cleaned on up. A couple of the Mongol forces heading death back down. He isn't too much on that engagement up north. Try to just get hit by scouts. I think with the secondary town center has more civilians in the field, but traders can have a higher efficiency than villagers. And right now the Mongol player is out of food, going for more Keshiks and archers. win this engagement but now i got some forces up here trying to hit the traders once again got some exposed villagers there they may want to back run into that corner and blue's eyeing for a counterattack rather than trying to engage and they got a good number of exposed villagers here uh no scout there so they may not be able to see those villagers which is very important but uh, they're They're now just idle. Oh boy. Inks trying to go some walls over here. Of course, Delhi still looks for the villagers. Oh boy. Blue has to win now. He is going to lose all those villagers. The number of villagers went down there. He's just moving around. He doesn't have access to trade anymore. This trade post is now encapsulated. Blue just may need just to win right now. Cash is charging way forward, getting some damage on those archers. Spearman getting some hits on those guys and raiders. On goes down. The Mongol player does not have access to siege engineers, so even though he has plenty of wood for some batting rams. He 
Pod does not have raid bounties nor improved raid bounties, but the little bit of raid bounties will help out, but nothing too significant. For now, he's just out of food. Doesn't have a whole lot of pastures, needs a lot more wood. Going for secondary town center. Might as well invest that wood, but I think maybe going for a big round of pastures would have been better, because he needs the food income. He has no food. He has four bills on food. Uh, this is getting really messy for blue and for pink. All the villagers are fighting. Scholars are healing themselves. Scholars just ignore the scholars. It's going hard to DPS through all that uh, health regen. Traders inside the town center might as well. It'll get its arrows firing without needing the garrison villagers. Uh, Cyan oh, pink is losing quite a bit here. Let's see, Cyan Blue has killed 39 villagers, Pink's killed 22, which are some of our traitors. Blue is ahead on the villager count right now, or a civilian count at least, but we know at least like 10 to 12 are dead weight in form of traitors. Okay, going for a good round of pastures. Here's a tip, if you want to get your uh, sheep more into the boundary of your town center when playing Mongols, as you know, you can do a move order, get the sheep around the edges, you can do that with other units as well. You click your, when you do that, find one of the sheep that's somewhere in the boundary, right click it, set the rally point on that sheep, it will not follow it, it will retain if it dies, say being bought by a villager, and then you have a little bit better collection spot for your sheep. Oh, God's ready may go down by not to the con. Sink aside being captured on up. Current military is 52 for Delhi Sultan, 12 for Mongols. Delhi Sultan is has a sizable army in the center in defense position. He assumes the Mongol player is gonna have another army, not realizing how bad the Mongols' food situation is. He has quite a bit of wood sort of. That's enough for a good round of pastures. And now he does have one level one food, so it will take what? Each patch can support up to 2.85 villagers? Probably 75. Either way. A decent number to work with is probably imagine each patch can support up to 2.5 villagers. That would be a decent number to work with. So right now he has 26 villagers on food, so you acquire at least 10 pastures. Yeah, 10 pastures would be a good number. He does have 14, so he has an adequate number of pastures, two villagers right now. Has a, but has no food income, no wood, no gold. He needs something to break over in just one set of these walls. That policy gate's probably perfect. They get the trade going to get a decent amount of gold income. He does have still 10 traders. 10 traders will at least give him level 2 Silk Road, which will give him some food and wood along with that. Mongol player has a small squad of archers. And I don't think he realized he has the walls fully encapsulated. Khan goes down. Minor loss at this point. He uh, went for a gear, realized it's already a gear. Now, oh, why is some of these sheep cyan? Is there an oval nearby? Right now, I'm confused why some of these sheep are cyan. Why is a sheep cyan? Wait. Why is it only... Click on one, I see the sheep cyan. If I click on all of them, I only see two of them cyan. Am I going crazy? Because usually it should be like a faded scheme. Not even a cyan, it should be just like a faded icon. Not even a solid icon. Weird, I'm just going crazy. Mongol players doing a good job reboosting archers. Archers can take more wood than food, which is good for the Mongols right now with his current economy situation of not great. 
The other summon is at uh, Castle Wage, which means uh, eventually veteran archers, so he does have a minute 30 to get his own age up to match his opponent. Probably a good idea to go for Stepford out at this point, because right now he's having trouble with trade, and that will give him a good alternative, alternate for trade. And when he, if he gets up to Castle as well, he has access to the defense arrow, which will be incredibly good for an archer versus archer conflicts. And there as well, this numbers is inflated by the number of scholars. He does have some mana arms. Proletite not being blown in the field. Proletite is also good for defense. As well as for offense. He'll break through here. He should really break through here. That's a better spot to break through. It won't necessarily stop his opponent from entering the area because of the fact that he can just delete the walls. The curl tie there oh, also gains a good health benefits for the villagers. Then Archer Research almost complete for the Delhi Sultanate, but we do now have the Veteran Archer Research on the way for the Mongols. So it'll be about a uh, 45 second window where it, Delhi Sultanate will have that advantage. Doesn't have any blacksmith research going, which is maybe a big error because it takes a long time. We now got the stable getting hit. Keep here. Oh, I went for the compound defender. I didn't see what landmark he, uh, Ink went for. Trader down. With a nearby curl tie, he does get a nice little bit of damage. 20% increased damage. Which does also apply to the dam- Nope. Oh, I think it does apply to the damage multiplier. Got the arrow arrow there, give him five seconds of extra arrows. Basically give him one extra volley of arrows. There's a bit of archer research. Got and now we got the damage increase and him he could have got that in that gauge. Not having that is actually a big oversight by pink. Pink's starting to lose some villagers there. Pink is actually behind in villagers and the Mongols. Mongols have, of course, secondary town center. Compound defenders almost finished the village fortress. We'll give him extra villager cues. He sees them in arms transition. Crossbows will be good for the Mongol as well as Keshex. Turn from our traders. I don't see any has a. Uh, on the field, he may have lost them all. Over here, we got more archers not being pulled on out. Crossbows being pulled on out. More sign colored sheep being pulled on out. See, there's six crossbows here, small number at the moment. Got more crossbows from there. There's the traders. He has at least 10 there, so he at least has Silk Road level 1 2. Skull going down. Pink has claimed the 4 relics, so the Mongols can't get the relics for stone income in Pila Age. There's a speed arrow. It's a really bit of a pain to use. A, I suppose a, it's just a 5 second arrow. You really want to use those arrows for his other things, but if you need to stay alive, that's will help him stay alive. Roll ties right there, not great, but it is distracting his opponent. Magnell up on the field, very, very good. Pink does he got another trader there. More of the mana arms going down. Uh, I've got some Mongol mana arms up on the field. He has plus two range armor, so these mana arms have six armor. The veteran archers do have nine damage, so do three damage per arrow. That can be put down to one damage for arrow with a defense arrow. Proltai has been withdrawn. The man arms may want to be withdrawn as well. But he's trying to pursue these archers. Got some man arms here. Magno rolls a miss there. Predict aiming sometimes predicts wrong. Man arms charge away four against these archers. Mongol players scraping the bottom of the barrel, food income, and wood. 
Yes, also 47 villagers on to food. Going to have to recount the number of pastures. At this one time, the Mongol player one needs around 20 pastures. A little less than 20, probably. Man arms going down. A couple man arms do get out of the way to the Magno, but that's simply not enough. The crossbows will take them out. And the Curl Tie can heal it up. Curl Tie is still back here. He has 21 pastures, so he does have plenty of pastures. That is Sultanate has 79 uh, villagers now, 80. And farms a great source of raid bounties for the Mongols. Does not have the improved raid bounties. In order for, the, for raid bounties to pay for itself, you need to torch down seven buildings in Forder and but improved raid bounties since it co provides cost stone, it allows to convert stone to other resources. So in my opinion, if you go for raid bounties, go for improved raid bounties. Now I've got the siege engineers, regular siege engineers, not improved siege engineers. Barracks up here going for times two man arms. In fact, the Mongol player is now at pop cap, which means he should start being aggressive or take time to get resources and age up. Traders starting to get hit there. All the six sides not the capture, trying to break down this town center. It's it. The arrows are hitting the mana arms, doing minimal damage to him, and the Magnus getting some damage. On um, so it does it act as a soft counter to structures. He has a number of uh, outposts here for defensive. He deletes the traders. Decide trade is not working. He needs military units. He's going to end the game now. Ink has army of 65 or 74. Quality is the same. Inks army is coming for a flank, at least a group of them. Probably sitting up. This will give the Mongol player a pretty good edge. Trying to fall some battery rams there. Right there, I should say. Go for compound defender. That's one of the landmarks. There's three landmarks you need to kill off are right here, here, and here. Arch now engaging the battery ramp, which is not a good I target. You may have builds along the flanks, but this is the Annihilation Victory Condition. Provide for Smite Forward, which also improves the damage of his Maganels. If they're trying to shank, they're trying to save the... stop the Maganel. The Maganel is actually quite wounded, so it could... will get torched down. This Maganel is doing just fine at the moment. It is getting its damage increased by the Maganel, and the Prototype also improves the bonus damage. He needs to focus down. He's just trying to run away. Siege weapons cannot be converted. It does. That one does go down. Another scholar right there. He needs to focus that one down. Scholar does go down. Scholar does go down. Uh, over here. That's just a scout. Got plenty of units over here. So And pink backs of the game. This is Anne Great saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.